We want to do one more example to help solidify our understanding of our scheme object-oriented programming system. Our goal in this example is to show the difference between is a and has a relationships. Our previous examples mostly explored how to define and use classes with inherited methods. In this example, we want to show that classes and instances can build relationships between distinct instances. Our example will be to implement some classes that establish family relationships between instances. Here's our type hierarchy. A mother is a kind of person, which is a kind of named object, which is a root object, so that we have a chain of superclasses, but no multiple inheritance. We want to look at these classes from the perspectives we've already learned about, class and instance diagrams, some desired behavior, how we define and scheme these classes and methods, and then finally, how our instances are represented under the covers in a scheme environment model. First, the named object class definition. We've already seen this, so we just note that this is a very simple class with simple state and behavior. In particular, we have a name local state variable, which an outside user can access through the name method. Named objects inherit from our root object class, and so support is a method as well. Note that we also have a names of procedure defined here. This is just a handy way to get a list of names corresponding to a list of named objects. Here's our new class diagram for person and mother classes. A person will have local state variables for mother, father, and children. The mother variable should be a link to an object of type mother, while father will just be a link to a person object. You're, of course, welcome to create a new father subclass if you'd like to clean this up. Children will be a list of objects of type person. The person class provides some methods to both access and change this state information. We see that mother inherits from, or is a, person, and only provides one additional method, have child. It also overrides or extends the type method as required of all classes in our system. So what behaviors do we want the methods in our classes to have? Here's an example using the new classes, which illustrates some of these behaviors. We'll create a mother named Ann and a father person named Bob. We can ask them their names, types, and so on. We now ask Ann to have a child with Bob, with the new child to be named Cindy. After this, we ask Ann to have another child, in this case named Dan. We can then ask Ann or Bob about the names of their children. Or we can ask Dan for the name of his mother and get back Ann, as shown here. Another way to picture the results from the example behaviors in our previous slide is to draw an instance diagram. Here we see Ann and Bob instances, each with their own lists of children. We also see that Cindy and Dan are appropriately wired up with their mother and father variables to establish their parent relationships. A little later, we'll return to this diagram to see how our have-child method accomplishes this wiring. Here's our person class definition. This has our standard structure, but now we have both internal inheritance relationships and other local state variables for has a relationships. To implement the inheritance of named objects, we have to do three things. First, we have an internal named object handler called name part here. Second, we override the type method with our standard type extend to indicate that the person type extends all of the type stuff contained in our name part. Third, at the very bottom, we use get method to pass along the message to the inherited name part in case the message is not handled directly here. Now, in the person class, we have local variables for father, mother, and children. In this example, these are all nil by default and only get set or changed when the various methods are evoked. For example, add child will add a specific child to the internal list of children inside our person. In addition to mutator methods, we also have accessor methods like mother, father, and children. Our last class implementation is for mother. This is a relatively simple class, mostly just inheriting from the person class, with the exception of the new have child method. The job of this method is to create a new child and then wire up the various family relationships appropriately. Let's look at how the have child method works using an instance diagram to help us keep things straight. As you write object-oriented code, you will find such instance diagrams indispensable to keep track of what your system is doing. As shown here, we have the A and B instances, resulting from the evaluation of the two define expressions creating these objects. We want to ask what happens when we evaluate and then apply the body of the have-child method from inside the A instance. First, we create a new person with a specified name, Cindy in this case. So far, we just have the handle on this object through the child pointer. Now we have to do the wiring. Next, we ask the child to set its mother variable to its mother. Note that the method itself does not take the mother as an argument. 
However, the self variable is available, and it points to the surrounding mother object. In a similar fashion, we ask the child to set its father variable to point to the father. In this case, this pointer is available directly as an incoming argument. Next, we ask the mother, again through the self variable, to add a child to include the new child in her list of children. And finally, we do the same for the father. So, through a series of method calls, the have child method has set up the various family relationships resulting from the birth of a new child object. As we've seen previously, the instance diagram is an abstract representation of objects and relationships between object instances. These objects also have a concrete representation in our scheme system. Let's remind ourselves, step by step, of how the scheme representation of a person is created in the environment model. We begin with the create person call, which just results in a call to create instance, as shown here. So what happens? First, create instance calls make instance. This drops a frame corresponding to the make instance call, with nothing in it, and then drops another frame from this for the let statement. Here, we have the handler variable bound for the moment to sharp f. We then evaluate the lambda in make instance, which creates what we call the instance message handler, whose only job is to respond to the set handler message, which we'll use in just a moment, and thereafter to pass along all messages to the actual message handler for the person. The next job of create instance, in red, is to apply the make person procedure with instance and name as arguments. So now the make person procedure is run. Note that self is bound to our overall instance object, in addition to name being bound to Cindy in the local frame resulting from the call to make person. Inside of make person, we have a local lat expression, which drops the frame to hold variables mother, father, children, and name part. Finally, in the body of the let, we evaluate the lambda expression, which creates the message handler procedure giving us all of the methods defined for the person class. Together, we see that the make person call thus gives our instance both the local state and the methods specified by our class definition for person. One additional detail. After the maker procedure for person has been called to generate this person handler, back in our instance frame we bind the variable handler to this person handler. This is done by the line shown in the create instance procedure, which uses the set handler message in the instance handler. After this, our instance message handler knows how to pass along any messages to the person handler when asked. Our object is not quite complete yet. Inside make person, we have a call to make named object in order to inherit the state and behavior of named objects. In the same way we have seen before, this creates some local frames and local message handler for the named object. And inside the make named object procedure, we have a call to make root object, which results in the creation of the root object message handler as shown here. So, the overall person object generated by the innocent looking call to create person is finally shown here. In our example, this person instance eventually gets bound to the variable C in the global environment. As one final use of our environment diagram for our new person, let's consider what happens when we ask C for her name. Recall that ask first calls get method on the object and then applies that method to the arguments. In this case there aren't any. So first get method is called on our person instance which is just the instance message handler as shown here. The instance method handler doesn't find the message name locally. Indeed the only message the instance handler knows is set handler. So it passes the message along to its bound handler. Step two then is to look in the person handler for the name message is not found there, so the person handler passes it along again through the call to get method at the bottom of the message handler code, this time to the internal named part handler. Step three is to look in the named object handler for the name message, where it is indeed found. The return result from the name clause in the message handler case statement is the lambda statement shown in step four. Thus, the method returned by the get method call is the procedure object corresponding to this lambda. The last step is to apply this method to no arguments, as shown in step 5. This results in the body of the method being evaluated, which is simply the expression name in the environment labeled E2 here. Tracing back up the frame sequence for this environment, we see that name is finally found up in the named object local frame, and the value Cindy is finally returned. This example has further illustrated several aspects of our object-oriented system. We have seen that classes in our system can have local state and local methods. The local state might include not only primitive data, like a name which is a symbol, 
but also can have variables that indicate relationships by way of pointers to other instances in the system. These has a relationships complement what we've seen previously, which was invocation of methods through the inheritance chain. In addition, we have seen a further example of how instances in our system work. In particular, we've seen how instance creation builds up a sequence of message and state handlers for each class in the inheritance chain, and then how messages get passed along this sequence of handlers to find the desired method. You will need to practice with more examples like these in order to gain experience in both writing object-oriented scheme code and in understanding how the object-oriented system works in scheme environments.